grandma and your grandma were sitting by the fire. My grandma told your grandma, I'm gonna set your flag on fire. You're talking about henna, 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 Ico, Ico, Andy. Gone with the Wind is a 1972 Gulf Star 36 sailboat. Over the years, she has undergone multiple extensive refits, including the one we have almost finished. At some point, everything below deck was gutted, leaving only the hull and the rig original to 1972. Ten years ago, the owner replaced her diesel engine with an electric motor. We have embraced the electric sailboat idea and continued to update Gone with the Wind's electrical system to meet modern power consumption needs. On an electric sailboat, fuel tanks equal battery banks, so we made sure Gwen never runs short on supply. As long as I don't have to stop, it's a lot of weight, it's like six, over 600 pounds. <laughs> yeah, we just bought them out. Our first bank is located in the forward cabin below the galley floor. Currently holding only one, but capable of holding two batteries, this bank is dedicated to our windlass and navigation lights. This battery bank is currently supplied with one Interstate 27 DC Marine battery, wired at 12 volts with a total of 88 amp hours. Our second bank is also located in the forward cabin, but below the salon floor. This battery bank is our first motor bank. It consists of nine Interstate 27 Deep Cycle Marine batteries, wired series parallel at 36 volts, with a total of 792 amp hours. We use a Bluetooth Victron battery monitor to display the bank's current battery life, amp draw, and amp hours consumed on our phone or tablet. Our third bank is located in the center of the engine room. This bank is our second motor bank. It consists of nine Optima D31M blue top batteries, wired series parallel at 36 volts with a total of 675 amp hours. A second Bluetooth Victron battery monitor remains connected to this battery bank whenever we are motoring, and we switch it over to our house bank when we are anchored. Those two motor banks run this beast. This is Babe the Blue Ox, our 36 to 48 volt industrial caterpillar, low RPM output electric drive rated at 40 kilowatts. We are still doing performance and range testing with our newly refurbished motor, and we will give you more details in a video dedicated all to Babe the Blue Ox. Our fourth battery bank is located on the port side of the engine room. This bank is your standard marine house bank. It consists of three Interstate 27 DC marine batteries, wired at 12 volts with a total of 264 amp hours. This bank is dedicated to the basics. Our head, bilge pump, freshwater pump, DC fans, chart plotter, and radio. Our fifth and final battery bank is located on the starboard side of the engine room. This bank is our luxury house bank. It consists of four Interstate 27 DC Marine batteries, wired parallel at 12 volts to an inverter, with a total of 352 amp hours. This bank provides us with what could be considered luxuries on a sailboat, which typically include any remaining electronics not already powered by the fourth bank, and our standard household appliances, including our 110 volt dorm refrigerator, mini freezer, and ice maker. If you kept count of how many batteries are on Gone with the Wind, I hope you got 26. So, the obvious choice to primarily recharge our battery banks is with solar. We did some research and upgraded Gwen's solar panels and charging system to fit our needs. We started with four 325-watt Panasonic solar panels. We know shadows drastically reduce wattage, so with at least 1,300 watts possible, we feel we have fairly compensated for the loss of watts to the possible shadow from our boom or sail. Once one of our battery banks runs low, or we're motoring and it's sunny out, we come back here to the aft cabin, switch on our breaker, which powers on our Midnight Solar Classic 150 charge controller. This bad boy is capable of handling wind, solar, or hydro energy. It runs at a maximum of 96 amps at 150 volts. It's also capable of handling a 12 volt system to 72 volts. And that's important for us because we happen to use both 12 volts and 36 volts. Besides the information displayed, this controller has numerous additional features, including ground and arc fault protection, a 380 day daily log, internet capability, and free upgradable firmware so the unit is never outdated. Once the solar passes from our panels through the charge controller, the rest of the magic takes place in the engine room. Follow me. 
Down in the engine room is where you'll find all of our Anderson connectors. This one is connected to the charge controller and this one is the battery bank that just got topped off. So we're gonna swap over to one of the other banks to charge that and all I need to do is with the breaker switch off, most importantly, disconnect. This here is the connector to the forward cabin bank and just plug it in like that. There we go, it's that simple. All of our battery banks are hooked up with an Anderson connector and we just swap them as needed to charge. Switch the breaker back on, Sean plugs in the appropriate voltage, either the 12 or the 36 volts, and the charge controller does its thing. When we don't have solar to power our needs or to recharge our battery banks, we turn to our auxiliary power, and that's this hybrid generator here. It's 4800 peak watts and 3500 continuous runs off of either propane or gasoline. Both of those fuel sources we use on board. We use propane for cooking and gasoline for the outboard. We have her permanently mounted here, so it's not going anywhere. And Sean has also vented it out one of the old engine vent ports. So we're good to go when those days aren't so sunny. When charging a battery bank with our generator, we use the assistance of one of our battery chargers, a 40 amp fast charger or marine smart charger. Located deeper in the engine room, we have our Samlex 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter. At 3000 continuous watts and a peak capability of 6000 watts, this inverter is strong enough to run a small apartment. And because it's a pure sine wave inverter, it won't damage our AC appliances. Sean is using a battery bank switch he repurposed as in an on and off switch and a 400 amp fuse bar to protect the inverter from any fault that could occur in the circuit. And back behind my head there is going to be a main breaker box. Um, the access to it is in the front cabin. And just like a breaker box you find at any house, it controls all of our outlets and our switches for the whole boat. When we are in need of power, we come and do one of three things. Head over to the back of the breaker box. Currently, we are plugged into shore power, so that is that connector there. When we would leave the marina and we are traveling or we are at an anchorage, we'll connect to this 30 amp marine gray connector. It is connected to the inverter, and that's when we want to run off of one of our battery banks. We use that pure sine wave inverter. And if those battery banks get low, we've got our third option. That's going to be to plug directly into the generator. And that is how we power up Gone with the Wind, one of three ways. Shore power, inverter, or generator. We have the option to reconfigure our battery banks to accommodate our power needs when anchoring long term. With 26 total on board, we have almost 2,000 amp hours available. By our calculations using our standard loads, we could last six days before we met the battery's 50% threshold and would need to recharge. So as long as we are energy consumption conscious and recharge our battery banks regularly, we can afford the greatest luxury of all, air conditioning. Well, that's if we can get our marine AC up and running. Thanks for watching Big Easy Sailing. A huge thank you to the Big Easy Sailing crew. Your support means the world to us. We also want to thank Northern Arizona Wind and Sun for both the great products and the great support they provide. Links to the products we use are in the description below. As always, you can keep current with our activities by following us on Facebook or Instagram. Until next time, thanks y'all. Grandma told your grandma, I'm gonna set your flag on fire. You're talking about hitting now.